Hey, Mark here, and I have a really fun giveaway for you. I have five digital copies of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem on digital. And if you would want to win a copy, just shoot me a message and be like, hey, Mark, I would win, love to win a copy of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. There's no guarantees to win, but it's worth a shot for a cool movie. So yeah, get Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem on digital today. After years of hiding, the Turtle Brothers set out to gain acceptance as normal teenagers and take on an army of mutants in this hilarious action-packed adventure. Buy or rent Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem on digital today and get over 40 minutes of bonus content when you buy on digital. Available at participating retailers, rated PG from Paramount Pictures. Hello and welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer and joining me is a man that's hanging outside his house, hanging on an umbrella while recording this episode. It's James Mula. Thank you for joining me. Hey guys, happy to be here again and my arm is frank and impresses me still. <laughs> so you came in for, for A Night's Tale, which is one of, one of my favorite movies, and now you're joining me for Police Story, which is one of my all-time favorite action films. So you... You're, we're covering all the cool stuff, and I, I uh, and also The Wizard, which was a movie of my youth, which I adore. So, uh, thank you for this. This is just James. Can I just say something? This is going to be cool. Like this episode, this is a this is an episode why I love the movies, films, and flicks podcast because well, first and foremost, I love to research and I love to learn. I feel like knowledge is power, and so the amount of research that I've done on Jackie Chan's career, like I've worked on, I've worked on some videos for him before, and I've done like Jackie Chan versus Jet Li and all that kind of stuff. First, Donnie Yen, he was in there. But I, I, this was one of the first times I've done a deep dive into his career and found out about him at the opera school and how he trained when he was young and he moved to Australia, how he came up with the name Jackie, his early attempt to break America, his, his Hong Kong hits where he's just like, you know what, I'm going to fuse American cinema and, and you know, like uh, uh, Hong Kong cinema and I'm going to put them into one, like I'm going to combine them and then I'm going to blow up and then I'm going to storm America and make it big with rush hour and and Shanghai Noon, and I'm still going to be rolling. And in Vanguard, a few years ago, he's on a jet ski, which makes me happy. So just diving into this and researching it, researching the directors, who he worked with through the years, his school, watching behind the scenes. And one thing I love about Jackie Chan, much so as I love about you know Buster Keaton and uh, Harold Lloyd, like his his the people he adores, is that even Johnny Knoxville. But th these guys. <laughs> like Knoxville loves Buster Keaton oh my gosh but these yeah. these guys put put it on themselves they hurt themselves they put themselves in danger they pushed the limits they hurt many stuntmen but they also were in there breaking their legs uh, getting uh, Johnny Knoxville's had four four million concussions like these guys put it on themselves to entertain audiences and I think police story is on almost close to the top of the mountain for Jackie Chan. But I just love how first and foremost, he and his stunt crew want to entertain. They want to entertain the masses and they do. I mean, this, this movie is wildly, this 1985 film police story is wildly entertaining. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'll rip off the commentary to the DVD set that I got, <laughs> you know, is, is one point. And let me just say before that, like the first time, cause rumble in the Bronx for me, was the first one. Mm -hmm. I was training at the dojo and all the senseis were like, oh, Rumble in the Bronx just came out. How cool is that? Like, so like a year or two later, I was working at Blockbuster and uh, I got a chance to finally see it because I didn't see it in theaters. And that movie was just, I mean, because I'd been watching a lot of Japanese cinema. I'd seen you know, Drunken Master and, and a couple movies like that in the past, but this was like, it was just cool. It was cool. It was fast. You know, it was just like the, the action was nonstop. I mean, it's it's really cool. But like all the 80s actors at the time, you know, like Stallone, Van Damme, mm -hmm. like they're big, tough. There's no comedy. They're just big and tough and like explosions and bullets and Schwarzenegger and the chopper and, and all that stuff, you know. And here this guy comes along and he's like, he can get hit. He, he'll take he'll take punches and he'll make comedy. And like, you know, I I, I think you may have also seen the Edward Wright interview. 
And like, that's, you know, that's one thing he said is like, this guy could probably whoop all of them, but mm -hmm. like he'll get, he'll take a beating for the sake of the movie. Cause he's in every guy. And I just thought it's just so cool. It's just so relatable. It's so cool. Like, and at that moment, it was probably the first time in my life that I was like, I want to meet a celebrity. And it was Jackie Chan. This guy's been hurt his entire career. So, I mean, he's been like, in, even in his movies and his career, he's probably had more fractures than any other human being on this planet, aside from maybe Johnny Knoxville. But yeah, and, and rodeo <laughs> clowns who work a long time. And I, you know, there's, there's been a ton of people, but just watching this movie again and seeing how he, you know, you know what I love about Jackie Chan and what I love about artists in general is he tinkered. He really tinkered. He, they initially wanted him to be a Bruce Lee knockoff. Mm -hmm. And then they wanted him to kind of focus on other types of martial arts. Then he went to America and he had to sort of blend into the American type of action. And then eventually he saved up his money. He started directing on his own. He learned. He failed in America. And then he learned from that. So the following year, he comes back with Police Story, which has a hard-boiled esque, not, not the movie hard-boiled, but it's like a... <laughs> the, the tough cop who goes rogue and causes an insane amount of destruction gets in trouble with superiors and he has to save a woman but you know he also has to you know, I, but then there's also just i mean the 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 double decker bus when they're driving through the town when he runs down the hill when he slides down the pole when he does his car fights like there are so many absurd and beautiful action beats and I think he found a, a did a really great job of synthesizing. And that's what I love about him is he didn't try to just like he's he he like he was a square peg and they tried to fit him in a in a, uh, you know, a circle hole. But then eventually he made himself he molded his films into something that could fit into all over the world and like make him huge. If that makes sense. Like he he didn't just go. This is me. Like I'm sticking to this. He adapted and I love it. He didn't go, this is me. He went, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who am I? <laughs> um, yeah, he's not in the Hugh Jackman movie. This is me. <laughs> Wait, um, no, what's the name of The Greatest Showman? This is, this is me? I don't know. I don't want to talk about that movie. But yeah, he said, who am I? Well, what's, what's man, because there's so many things to just you pick any point right there. Just go off on a thing. One of the things last night that, that I was rewatching it again, there are so many nuances that he, he brought to every movie after that. After police story, like when he goes down the, the light pole with all the lights exploding, that was in rush hour two, kind of when he's going down the whole flag thing. Or like when he's going down the side of the cliff, that was like in Who Am I when he's coming down the side of the glass building. These were stunts that like he did before, but then he did them even bigger. And it, it it's just he's so entertaining. And I think that's what he really understands is that, yeah, martial arts are really cool. I mean, I'm, a, I'm an unabashedly huge fan of martial arts flicks. But what Jackie brings to it is this excellent physical comedy. And it's just, I mean, this is the movie where he's like touching his face, like, oh, I hit the cactus. And he's doing that. But that became trademark. Every yeah. movie where he did something like that, he'd do that like face scrunchy thing. It's really refreshing to go back to, you know, not just this movie, but movies in general that are older, that, where the, the start of careers or the start of genres or, or trilogies or whatever. And, and just to see how well this movie holds up against the catalog that he's done since then, even it's still the pinnacle. It's, it's the pinnacle of Jackie Chan. I think it's just perfect. I, I think so too. And I, th th there's a couple reasons for that. And, and also too, I love how he just saw Buster Keaton gags and was like, I'm going to recreate those, but bigger. So if you watch the side by sides, which makes me so happy the way he recreated all that. But I think Super Cop, not Super Cop, that was in, in the States. We had Rumble in the Bronx, right? And then we had Operation Condor, Super Cop and First Strike. And they were all renamed. And they, 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 I didn't know that one of them was like, you know, Police Story 4. I just thought it was First Strike. So exactly. It, yeah, Jackie I, I, Chan's First Strike, not Police Story 4. I was like, I'm just going to no go idea. watch it. I don't care what it is. I'm going to go see it. And what I think what works about police story is that sometimes I think when, when look at like, this is a really weird example, but Fletch with JV chase, that movie was beautiful. Yeah. But then Fletch too, he was just sort of, I'm not saying police story too is Fletch too, but he was trying to recreate the magic of that. And I yeah. think what police story gets right is that 
it's stunts are big and they're horrifying and I would die, but they sure. aren't, they aren't as extreme as some of his later ones. And call me crazy. I mean, I know he slid down a pole, burnt his hands, landed in a thing. Like I, I know people fell out of a bus and, but he's not jumping 26 feet into it's, it, it's, it, it's before it became uh, Jackie Chan needs this in his movies. Like this is what you go to see a Jackie Chan movie for. Oh, he has to slide through a ladder. Oh, he has to pick up a bar stool. Oh, you know, there's a tire there. He's going to use that tire. And I, I love ladder, all that. The ladder. Yeah, the ladder. And like, listen, Skip Trace with Rennie Harlan. There's some beautiful stuff he does in that movie, too. There's a really great gag. But Police Story is great because it's it's before that became required viewing for him. And so, it, you know, he had done stunts before. He had done martial arts before. I'm not saying this was the only time he's ever done stunts in his life. That's totally incorrect. But I do think there are movies sometimes that, explode like you know look at slashers right halloween wasn't the first slasher but it exploded slashers into popularity so you it's it's not the first slasher but I, police story is not jackie chan's first film nor is it the first film that he did big stunts in like he did big ones like the huge stunts before this movie but i think this one with the hill and the bus and the sliding down the pole that just stepped it up to another world and i think what this holds up is is because it it still feels fresh and dangerous and a lot of glass breaks but it's it, it doesn't feel like oh we got to up this we got to up that we got we need to include this if that makes sense it feels very organic well i'll 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 give you an analogy then for this because i'm a big skateboarder that's but this is what i love right you watch these videos of these guys pulling this stuff off you know like jaws doing 25 steps at leon or like and jamie thomas doing 18 foot jump over into nothing and it's like they make it look easy you mm -hmm. don't see the millions of times that they failed and they broke themselves and they finally landed it you know and and of course you don't see that in the movie the finished cut of a jackie chan movie but it that to me is is what it's like like these guys did it over and over and over and over again until they got it right and that's what you see and it looks effortless and just magical it's magical you know knowing that they put that much into it, that much effort, that much care for the audience. They do it for the audience. And that's, it's just beautiful. It's cinema. It's perfect. Absolutely. And he has his own stunt school. He has his own team. He directed this. Like, I think this is when he felt very comfortable with his abilities. He had learned. He maybe became a little jaded because of the, the lack of success in America. And he went back making this thinking he had something to prove. And he also had an incredible stunt team who, you know, you know, you know what's crazy about these movies is you, you see these guys falling out of the double-decker bus. They went to the hospital. You see some of these takes. Like, that dude's going to the hospital. Like, this is, I'm not saying it's good, but the, remember when Jackie fought Benny, uh, the jet, like Benny was hitting him. Like the, you, one thing about Jackie Chan is he will get hit. And yeah. so the, the fight at the end when three people are coming at him at once, this isn't the classic 1v1v1v1v1. One 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 one. Like he is bouncing off many people three at a time. And it's, it's just, I don't know, this, this just, this, I think if you're putting together a top five Jackie Chan list, police story has to be in the top five, three, I would say. I think Definitely three. It would be kind of provocative. Like Drunken Master 2 is incredible. Pe you know, people. It's, that's. Those are man, number. I, I, I would say police story is probably for me the only required top five because then you're dealing, it's, it's kind of like the Beatles. Are you an early fan, a late fan, a middle fan? What's your what's your period of Jackie Chan? I mean, when he came to America, his body was um, his body was duct taped together. But he still, I think they found a way to pair him with Chris Tucker, Owen Wilson. They found ways for him to succeed with other aspects, but they still featured him doing some really cool stuff. But he, yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I was looking through the greatest action movies of all time. And I went through about 10 lists today from reputable sources, Empire, Rolling Stones, you know, just bigger, bigger right. sites. And I'm not saying they're all reputable, but like, at least I feel like they, they put some work into it. And it's, it's big stories in all of them. It's in all of them in the greatest action movies of all time. It, I mean, it's, it belongs it's there. It, it's a tight movie too. Yeah. The runtime is perfect. 100, 100 minutes. Yeah. You're never bored. The whole movie, like you look away, you miss something and that, you know, I, I feel like a lot of movies these days, I love the MCU, but like, I don't have three hours all the time to watch <laughs> a movie. And like, sometimes I just want to watch a something fun, fun yeah. movie. And Police Story hits that. It's it's fun. It's classic Chan. It's 
action comedy. It, I mean, it's yeah. How do you not include that in like? It's just it, it's great. And like the even the silly bits in this, where he's on the phone, or where you have the fake killer attack, or that you have... is that scene. So Laurel <laughs> never seen Police Story. Oh, so, so I'm watching it, and she's like, "This is the worst assassin ever. Like this is just silly." And I'm like, "I can't blow it. I'm letting her watch the scene." And then it's like, "Wait." He's not an assassin. I was like, no, they're trying to scare her. But like, it's so ridiculous. Like this, I mean, you're watching and he's standing up and she's laying down and all of a sudden he's on the ground and he's like trying to stab at the floor. And I'm like, how did you even get there? Why are you doing it? Like, it's just absurd. I just yeah. love it. And you know what's interesting? It's absurd, but then there's also very brutal violence. When Jackie Pan, Jackie Chan starts working the guts of the villains at the end, when he just pulverizes their insides. And then just people getting slammed through glass, people fall. Like there's a lot of really, there's people dying. Like there's a lot of people getting violently hurt in this movie, but then you have an entire subplot about a lawyer who uses, like if the glove doesn't fit, you can't convict. Oh my God, and that's About the bus. How many buses pass by? 80? Okay, well you went by minutes. So how do you know it was that bus? And just yeah. the twisting of words and then the tape gets mixed up and... The, the, oh, the sexual innuendos. Is, that's it's so good though, because it's, it's like right. It's supposed to be that like this this crazy trial where this dude is doing all this wordcraft stuff, and then it's like I have the evidence, and you're like he's got some evidence, and then like oh man, and then poor Mays. May, <laughs> he's such a he's such a turd to May, and yeah, just the car. <laughs> and then there's the car bit with the cell, the the phone booth. It's it totally. Yeah. <laughs> This movie should give us whiplash. It really should. Because the violence, when it, at the end when it pops off in that in that mall, it's he's pissed. He's ready to like, like he's really ready to hurt people. Well, you brought and, up a you brought up a good point earlier, right? So the movie starts off in the village and those cars are going through they're destroying the entire shanty town basically. Like I mean, that's just I can't believe they they did that first of all cuz it's I mean, with the shots, the long shots and the zooming in and the coming down. And I'm like, I'm, I'm sitting here like all three of the bad guys hit the rock. But Jackie Chan didn't hit the rock at the end of the hill. But it's like I'm looking at that. I'm like, yeah. So like, right. Th and dude, the, the guy peeing his pants and he yeah. went through the shot. And it's like, it's a, it's it's like lethal weapon tense. It's like, oh, my God, shoot out bad guys. Ah. And then like right when he gets, you know, then Selena after after the bus and everything else. And then it's like cactus and all that well the assassin but i mean it's they didn't just, say a it's word just... to me remember they just sit there looking at the goldfish no and then but it's you know and then you watch the mall fight of course at the end this the, i mean the mall fight let's let's it, until stranger things there was never a mall scene in anything that i liked as much as that and uh it's so i'm not i don't mean saturday morning cartoon and it's hokey it's violent it's so violent but there's no blood and mm -hmm. so you're like Oh, they're probably just knocked out, even though you see a guy literally going through a glass staircase and you're like, you know, adult me is like, he's done. But like younger me was like, oh, he's, you know, he's just got the, the birds and the stars going around his head. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and it works. I don't think people realize the the balancing act to to not go into too violent, but then still keep it violent, but then still keep it palatable for most audiences, because what what I love what Jackie Chan said. He said in a lot of Asian countries, uh, specifically you know in in China, Hong Kong, where he's from, he or British controlled Hong Kong. British Hong Kong. Yeah. What he was born, yeah. Yeah, and and so uh, they wanted stunts. He said Jackie Chan said they wanted stunts, and mm -hmm. and then but in American cinema, we do love that Dirty Harry, the Mitchell, the Death Wish, because this is this is pre lethal weapon this is pre die hard oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, and so we don't have those cops yet mm. and so this is this, this is, is charlie bronson stuff like that's what we were doing yeah you know and, like the 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 heart as nails tough like <laughs> could be asking yourself do i feel lucky <laughs> and, and listen he 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 never goes that hard with it because that's not who he is that's not his strength but it it is it is uh I get, you know, that's not his strength. So he instead made it more about just being super pissed off. Like he's not a renegade dad. He's not a renegade father. He's not a ren he, he's not really a renegade cop. He's just really pissed off. <laughs> and he, he's going to kick some heads and he's going to work some guts. And I think that's such a great balance for him. And you can see him <laughs> learning 
you can you can watch him learn with this movie and and i and just you know the, the stunts i mean he he throws a front kick through a glass window car window and kicks a guy there's there's a scene where what selena hits th- swings a bat through glass and hits a guy like mm-hmm. there's so many neat gags in this movie and dislocated shoulders many people have dislocated shoulders in this movie but it it oh, just it, but it's never too violent but then it gets silly and and but also too it has a relatively it's i wouldn't call it a high concept movie because it takes a few steps to explain it so this is about a cop who just wants to bust a dude but he also has to keep hit a man has to keep a crime lord's mistress safe so she can testify against him i guess is what you could say but there's a lot of twists and turns like this isn't mad max where they go there and back again like they drive out and then they drive back so he still keeps it relatively high concept which is nice but there's still some fun elements involved and listen you know the peace police chiefs that are like you've gone too far like that's such a staple of america wait this is well i guess beverly hills cop was a year prior and they had the angry police chief in it who actually was a police chief he was incredible but I don't know. I just, I, lo- I, I love it. I love the synthesis of this movie and it never feels like two movies. It feels like one movie. And that's, ho- that, that's what needs to be respected is what I'm saying. I mean, then you look at the, the modern remake, like 21 Jump Street and it's like two cops, but it's a comedy. And like, of course they're not martial artists, but like, okay, there's similarities between that and police story, you know, like here's a cop, but Jackie Chan's a, a, an angered guy doing a job, but he's also really funny. Whereas one is more funny and less action, I, I just see, you know, like oh, wait, like so twenty one jumpsuit, they're cops, but they're funny. But then there's also action, right? Yeah, but you know, not as much action as Jackie Chan, but a lot more gags and stuff like that. Like the whole movie's a, you know, one, one gag, right? But then there's no way that those writers did not see Police Story and go, okay, <laughs> you know, we can make an action movie, but you know, we're gonna go over the top and make it American funny. You know, but then Jackie Chan is here laying the blueprint for, I mean, everything he did. After, I mean, listen, I, I, I'm not going to be an apologist for Around the World in 80 Days. I just hated <laughs> that movie. I really did. I saw it because of Jackie Chan. And I was like, oh, God. This Why? Is... Yeah. And, and you know, he's had some bumps in the road. I mean, for a career as when long as... 100 like, movies, you're going to have some bumps in the road. Oh, my God. I mean, and he's just nonstop. He's still nonstop, you know. But, like, that's that's what he did. Like, that, the formula is shanghai noon and nights that formula is rush hour one two three like that's Mm -hmm. that's he it's the refinement for american audiences american produced movies with jackie chan that just did the same thing jackie chan had been doing they just you know bumped it up for the box office really but otherwise yeah jackie chan been doing this he's good (laughs) at it and that's and police story i mean he's got great scenes in drunken master Mm -hmm. i mean that's just undeniable but this is this police story i think for jackie chan at least you know because he'd done cannonball run and Mm -hmm. and come over here to the west and didn't have commercial success and you know 1984 i can't remember the name of the movie that was a box office bust too and then he came back and then boom police story and i think it was his refinement and and you said it earlier he realized who jackie chan was and he made police story he refined it he put it in there and that's that's it that's the start of the Jackie Chan that I know that I've seen most of the work of the yeah, later years. It's kind of interesting. We, we, we both discovered him in 96, mm-hmm. but I think to most people, they discovered him in 2001 or wait, yeah. wait, when was rush hour? 98. Actually, when was rush hour? <laughs> rush hour. So I saw that in high in school, so it had to be before 2000. So. Yeah. 98. So I think that's when a lot of people discovered Jackie Chan. And like, was, let's say yeah. non cinephiles. Let's say you know, the only reason I discovered Jackie Chan is because of Quentin Tarantino talking about him and me going and watching Rumble in the Bronx and go watching his other movies. And so, yeah, I guess I was I knew about his stuff when he came over to America and did Rush Hour. But he and Chris Tucker in that first movie, they work well together. I just watched it again recently. But yeah, I mean, it, it, but I like what I like most about Police Story is. And, and also, too, on how iconic it is. I mean, Rapid Fire pulls the, the scene with the motorcycle off. You have Bad Boys 2 when they destroy all that, that whole housing community. When you have, well, there's another one. It's, oh, Tango and Cash when he just stands in front of the car. Yeah, that's like, right. That's right. That's like the opening of that movie. 
And so in the first 20 minutes, two big films lovingly paid homage to Police Story. So I think, and, and look at look at what Police Story, I think, did for, like it, it really did influence cinema moving forward. And then you got, I know it's a completely different director, completely different star, but then you have Hard Boiled, which basically takes care of all the gun work in the 90s for the United States. So it's kind of fun watching you know, Asian cinema be really influential. And, you know, and yeah. Speaking, speaking of guns real quick, before I forget it, how great is it? How refreshing is it to watch a movie where they run out of ammo and actually have to reload? They don't get like 35 shots off and then they pull out a clip. He's like, it's six shots. And then he's got the reload ready. Yeah, I, love, I, I just that. love that. What good attention to detail. Yeah, when he reloads the gun with when he has that ready, that's such a cool scene. <laughs> so and, cool. But yeah, like it, it's it's this is a movie where people pee their pants. This is a movie where it's quite cynical about the law, like the the the, the cops in the country. Like there's a cynicism to it, but there's also just an absolute joy to it. I mean, he steps on dog poop and then he moonwalks. Like he there's an entire phone conversation where a woman's getting beaten. And he's like, ah, whatever. You're like, you'll be all right. And, it, and then he gets stuck on all the phones and then he just wants to eat. He wants to eat ramen with pencils and then the racers fall off. And, and then he's, he's, oh, the racers. <laughs> like it, but I'm telling you, man, like this shouldn't. Th- th- OK, this should work. But this is something that was thrown into a blender and formed a great shake. Uh, like if you just if you left these all out and didn't blend like I, for some reason, it blended together really well, James. And I think yeah. that's because, I mean, this guy was in movies a long time before he was in police stories so it's just once again as someone who likes to watch and learn and see people progress like it's cool going back and watching the documentaries about his films and and seeing him come up through the 70s and then come over to the come over to america and and learn from that and then make a beautiful movie it's i don't know i dig it i just really like it i just well what's what was really cool is that so uh I saw the interview where they were asking him about how he wrote it. How, how did you come up with the concept for police story? And obviously it, it was already police story. He knew he wanted to be a cop. And he said he wanted four things. And, and I told Laurel this and she was like, this should be like an improv thing. Right. And he's like, I want the mall. I want the bus. I want comedy and I want the village. And then when they were talking about it, you know, they're like the village, they're really like the end you're chasing after the guy. He's like, no, I want to hook people. I want that to be like, the thing that people are watching they're like and then comedy and he's like no then the bus and then comedy and it's like you know him talking about how he starts to formulate like the story wasn't even fleshed out it just had these couple of things and him and his writers were like all right okay no it's a village why are you there drugs okay drugs (laughs) chasing a drug guy you know and it's like and it just started to form from that you know and it's just you know again I, i feel like a lot of movies that we watch are formulaic the writers know like what you know it, it's it's like the 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 major chords on a guitar you know like it, the c and the d and the g and the you know maybe you got a, an f in there it, whatever <laughs> like every counting crows song <laughs> it's just and i'm a huge counting crows fan but i mean it's all the same chord. all those pop songs are the same freaking chords yeah well they know that they know that because that's what we like we eat it up we love that there's an art know? to a great pop song yeah, oh, there, there, there definitely is, you know, and then, but I think, you know, writers know that, oh, and so they they write these movies and it's formulaic, but then they hear Jackie talk about like, well, we were just kind of like putting stuff here and there, and then the story happened, and then we, we just, and we figured it out, you know, that's cool, because like, I want to be in that room with those people, I want to, I want to sit at that table and just be like, wow, this is fun, you know, and that's, uh, that impressed me, you know, I mean, it's so that's I'm so glad cool. you brought that up too. Yeah, because he just had those ideas, and he goes, well, "Let's make a movie out of these." And then they're like, "Oh crap!" But I, I like that though. I like that they he had he envisioned these things. We're gonna do this, and then they they write around it. And that's normally not how you write a movie. But but well, you know what? Look at Jaws. I I know I keep bringing this up, but Jaws <laughs> that that shouldn't have worked. Look at Mad Max. It was just storyboards. Look at just some of the the greatest no one thought star wars was going to be good like like everyone was like this is crap so i kind of like how these movies that maybe shouldn't have worked but and are made very untraditionally become classics and then they're mimicked non-stop 
but there really was no formula <laughs> when they made them. Like it's, there's not much, I mean, stagecoach is Mad Max Ray Roads has a big stagecoach vibe, but I mean, police story, like you said, it was based on four things. Let's make that. Let's add some humor in here. Let's add a whopper of a court case and, and then a mall fight. And it, yeah, but it, but you know, it's kind of nice too, because you watch the beginning of, of police story, you have the gunfight, you have people dying, you have stakes, but then you have an entire village destroyed. Then you have the umbrella, which was metal. And then you have the gag where he, then he runs down a hill and then the air, the, you know, the air brakes on the bus kicked it back. So then the stuntman didn't land on the car. That's why oh. they all landed on the pavement and went to the hospital. Oh no, <laughs> I did not yeah. know that. On the oh, Criterion disc I have, I watched a documentary and the air brake stopped and then it pushed them back. Air brake trucks. I had to drive one of those one time on a, on a commercial that we, we walked a, a live bull into a house, like a, a bull, James, a bull into a, a <laughs> suburban home. And I had to drive a truck <laughs> with air brakes without a license. It was the craziest shoot of my life. My but brother yeah. did the air brake thing like five or six years ago. He, uh, he drove a race car for a buddy of his in a in a trailer across country in a in a big rig. Like Whoa. he didn't he didn't have a he didn't have that license, man. He did it. Break, <laughs> it. break early. Yeah, he said it was the most terrifying thing. And my brother is like an adrenaline dude. He's motorcycles and all that kind of stuff. And he said that was the most terrifying thing he ever did was drive that rig. <laughs> it was that night. I didn't have a GPS. It was I didn't have GPS on my phone yet. And it wasn't that night. It was like 5 a.m. And I just had I had to drive a, a air brake grip truck with paper directions yes map quest and then and then i had to walk a get a bull into a house it was insane <laughs> it's insane but oh, yeah, so it's, it's I don't in, know that's in was, your autobiography but yeah it's insane my <laughs> my life deep blue hoffmeyer but yeah so the, the, <laughs> so you, you watch this scene right and you're like how are they going to top this but then i think chan is smart enough to to sprinkle in really inventive action scene so you get the huge chase but then you get the knife wielding assassin which is fun but then you get the actual assassins which is a lot of like which is really cool and then you get the the gunfight at the house where the 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 crooked cop gets killed and then he takes another cop he takes the police chief uh, hostage. hostage and everyone's like hey man like it's cool and then he lets him go and the guy's like it's totally fine and then you top it off with the mall chase and and the, the mall fight and at the end you're going man it it never you're not saying oh it didn't recapture the magic of the first 20 minutes you're like holy mackerel like so he knew where to sprinkle in the humor the action scenes so even after that whopper of a, a beginning it doesn't drag like it doesn't start off high and just collapse like he keeps you engaged and there's an art to that there definitely is and you know <clears throat> we kind of touched on the the tightness of the runtime so the editing is is perfect for it but yeah, the the variety, it's, you know, it's like, it's like eating them. Like I watch a lot of the cooking reality shows, right? And it's like, the texture's all the same, you know, like the flavors are there, but the texture is the same. And that's kind of like Jackie Chan could have fallen into that trap, but he knows the variety of the things that you want. Like, yeah, there's a knife fight, there's gunfights, there's cars going to, you know, then there's the, he's hanging from a bus and I'm like, oh my God, dude, this is, this is not, then there's the comedy. And then it's almost like a soft jump scare. Like, oh, that assassin wasn't bad. Then it's the real assassin. Yeah. And you're like, oh man. So like, yeah, he's, you're, you're just engaged. You're, you're constantly engaged. And that takes, that's talent. That's hard. Absolutely. Yeah. Like if you can't turn away, that's very hard to do. And, 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 and what I like too is people get wedged between escalators like the, all the fights take place in different spots. You have the car, you have the apartment, you have the village, the mall, different floors of the mall. Yeah. I do think th there's enough, there's enough difference there in the violence to not make you go into sort of violent mind. You know, your mind doesn't just turn off because of the sheer violence. Like, so, you know, it's interesting. People love John Wick chapter two. I just had to watch all the John Wick movies and analyze every kill, every headshot, everything. Sure. I had to watch it frame for frame. It go go watch it on fandom. It's amazing. Also, some cool graphics. But yeah, they <laughs> they the the, kid, the ones in, in John Wick two when he's going through the tunnel and then the museum. All none of the henchmen are unique, and none of the kills are really unique. So I, I love how committed Keanu is. You can never doubt how amazing he is in those movies. But what I like more is in the first one when he goes into the Red Circle Club, where he he first goes against the the like bathing people. 
And then he goes against the, the suit henchman. Then he goes against the red coat henchman. Then he fights the boss of the henchman and the two MMA fighters, Keith Jardine and another guy who I can't remember. Like there, there's levels to the villains in the Red Circle Club and like the villainess on each floor, she kills different looking people. Like that's what, and even in like, I remember an old boy, like when, when he fights, mm. the, the people have enough personality to really dig it. And I think that's another great thing about Jackie. This movie is the action's so inventive and so stylish that you never just, you, your brain never clicks off because you're like, oh, it's just John Wick killing 40 people. If that may, does, does that make sense? Like there's enough variety there. To yeah, keep I mean, you engaged. I, this is a major problem in video game development too. Like, I read a lot of. I'm a huge gamer, right? I read a lot of reviews for games coming out, especially RPGs. And like, my chief complaint a lot of the time, I'm looking at you, Octopath Traveler, is there's just no variety. You're fighting the same enemies. It's like, okay, I know the tactic, you know. And I'm I'm expected to do this over a long period of time, and I'm just I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. Like, you need that variety because. Everybody, you need a strategy, right? If if something's different, then you think in your mind, approach it differently. And 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 he does. Every time Jackie fights somebody, it's not just like kick to the face, jump kick to the face, punch to the face, punch to the face. Like that's not, no. Every person that attacks him gets dispatched in an amazingly creative way or, it, or beats him up for a good amount of time before he figures it out. Like that's, yeah, the variety is, is just, you know, and I like that you, you touched on the the multiple levels of the mall because that that's what I think is so cool about it, is that it's not just a one level thing. It's like he's, I mean, uh, it's just inventive, you know. And it take it just, you know, and that's that's definitely, you know, he uh, in the Peking Opera, like that's where he was supposed to go after the China Drama Academy, you know. Jeez. And then that that fell through. It wasn't popular, and so he was doing stunts, and then went down to Australia, and you know, I, I, I mean, Jesus, Laura was listening to. Uh, his Spotify the other day. People yeah. don't recognize that like he has a great voice when he's singing in his language. Mm-hmm. He has great tone, like Jackie Chan, but like that's what he was brought up to be an entertainer, a singer, an acrobat, a martial artist, like, and he is all of those things. It was a brutal school for 10 that's years. 14 hour days, and he would to walk yeah. and get up at 4 a.m. And the, he, when he talks about what he had to do at that school, you're like, oh my gosh. But I mean, look, look what it made him. I guess he became one of the world's biggest stars ever. And so my, my question about that, though, is right, right. He went to this school, but they couldn't beat talent into him. They could beat skills into him that they had to practice over and over to get right. There were lots of people who went to those schools that aren't international action stars. But like he had that talent, you know, because he's he wasn't. I'm telling you, man, the way that he was able to synthesize all the different you know, Eastern, Western action films, comedy, the way he drew from Buster Keaton, the way he wanted right. to entertain, like he found a, an entirely new lane. He failed when he tried to be Bruce Lee. Yeah. He failed when he tried to be American tough guy. But when he was actually Jackie and used his his upbringing with singing and entertaining and brought martial arts into it, that's when his movies blew up. And I think that's why he has such a great legacy. And also this is random, but of all the action stars too, like, I love that he takes a beating and another action star who takes a beating that I appreciate is Jean-Claude Van Damme. Like I feel like in every single Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, he was a dancer first. So he just wanted to enter like, but he, <laughs> he gets beat up in all of his movies and then he rallies and wins. But I, mm. I like that. Like you watch a Steven Seagal movie and he just schlacks people. So I dig that they, they both had this sort of, you know, they're both smaller guys, but I think they both had this sort of ability in them to be somewhat fallible but also just steamroll your face into oblivion with some high kicks. So I, I don't know. I, I think that's why, you know, Jean-Claude Van Damme didn't have, he's still acting, but he only had a certain amount of films, but you watch his earlier stuff and those are revered films. I mean, they're I, Bolo Young's a great villain, but I just, I like that both guys get hurt. And I, I like that they both make themselves look silly. It just makes me happy. You know, you brought up, so I'll, I'll just briefly. So Sylvester Stallone, right? Yeah, tough guy Rambo, but like Rocky. The <laughs> whole premise of that first movie is him getting the crap kicked out of him and rallying back because he's that tough. And Rambo so has like, PTSD, right? And he's just walking through. Like he doesn't want to be part of that. 
the first blood at least the first yeah not part two where he goes back to to vietnam where he's just yeah he's jumping he does the knife he gets hooked on the airplane jumping out he's got the explosive arrows yeah no not that's not no, no. john rambo the first john rambo was just, yeah he's just trying to walk through Oregon. that's it yeah, and uh but you know yeah can we sorry to interrupt you uh no, no, go ahead. <laughs> let's, let's think about this john mcclain keanu reeves and speed i think i really do look at my some of my favorite action heroes at least seem fallible if they, it's it's they they they're not you know even arnold and predator sold to the predator which made me happy like the predator mm-hmm. beats the crap out of him so i think that's what makes a great action film is when there are stakes there are stakes in the police story world there's stakes in speed people like die like the raid that's one of my favorite all-time action films there's stakes 13 assassins there's stakes the night comes for us there's tons of 13 assassins and the raid in the same breath oh my god yes gorgeous (laughs) movies and even seven samurai there are stakes you know people die you know that's like my favorite movie (laughs) and we should talk that but it's i i I, maybe that's what makes it is I, i don't know maybe i just don't like the super immortal I mean, I love the Fast Furious movies, well, but so those here, aren't... here, here's a here's a interesting. So I feel like Jet Li had to course correct. So like the first time you really see him as an American is Lethal Weapon Four, yeah. and he's an unstoppable killing machine, dude. He's just like the most lethal person you've ever met, right? And then you know he does. I, I can't even remember Romeo Must Die came out for like he does all these movies. He's just Red Dragon total... was cool though, but then he does Danny or... the Dog. Oh yeah. And he is just a whipped slave of a guy. And then he has to overcome that. And then that's the first time I feel like I saw Jet Li is like, oh, he was an underdog that came back. Right. But, oh. you know, Kiss and then, of the dragon, not red dragon. And then there's Donnie Yen, who is just classic because, I mean, Ip Man, he's not I mean, he's 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 badass, but he's not totally invulnerable. Mm-hmm. He he gets good beatings throughout that too, and I think Donnie Yen for me is the closest approximation in modern day doing action movies still to to Jackie Chan. I don't think he nobody will ever be Jackie Chan again. But um, but you know Jackie Chan never really played that like straight. He's, he's not like the master, whereas if yeah. he is, you know. But I I can see a lot of influence in Donnie Yen from Jackie Chan. For sure. A lot of cops Jackie Chan started playing but in '85 and beyond. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. I do want to say though, uh, Kiss of the Dragon. There is that's a it. fight in yeah. Kiss of the Dragon in 2001 when I love when he fights the twins and I love when he fights the boxer and that song the by tw- NERD or like oh, Nerd comes on. Yeah, the twins fight though is just in- that's insane. That's that, an insane fight. Like I I remember that. I I don't remember much about Bridget Fonda, but I remember those two fights being really awesome. But I mean Fist of Legend's pretty cool, but that's a totally different movie. But I do like Fist of Legend, even though it's a remake. But, but also great movies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh but it's I, I guess going but back like, to like would I would I be watching Jet Li without Jackie Chan? Would I watch Donnie Yang without I mean Jackie Chan? I mean, uh, yeah, you could say Bruce Lee too, right? But yeah. but Jackie Chan was there that was the gap for 20 years at least and and and, and what's 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 it I, I and Sam, o, Sa, Sam o. oh yeah 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 like it, but he you know, my stepmom introduced me to him which is kind of <laughs> random but yeah it's i mean there's so many different stars but i just think living in america like let's rephrase it to living in the states jackie sure. chan is who i mean bruce lee I, I watched enter the dragon when i was young i mean everyone knew bruce lee but i think Jackie Chan opened up the doors for more like Chow Yun Fat to come over for yeah I mean for uh, like I well I mean John Woo came over earlier and did Hard Target and a few other movies that were successful but I just I think Jackie Chan for me at least opened up the door to go check out his earlier films or to go check out Jet Li like you know when Jet Li came into Lethal Weapon four. That was a big deal. And I yeah. remember everyone's like, yo, Jet Li's going to be in this. I'm like, who's Jet Li? So I remember I looked into him like, oh my gosh. And then, you know, so I think he, I think his movies were a success and then they were able to sort of capitalize on that. But we're in the middle of like Jackie Chan mania. Yeah. Like in the 90s. At that time. 96 and So like and Jet Li coming in, like we were, we were ready. We were ready. Yeah. Give us another guy that does cool stuff like this. And there's yeah. Jet Li comes in, you know, but I, I did want to say even before I watched any Jackie Chan, 
when I was a kid, maybe in like fourth or fifth grade, my buddy next door got a copy of uh, Young Dragons, the Kung Fu Kids. And uh, we watched that first movie to death. And like, I just loved the, 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 the Foley artist noises, you know, like the kicks and the pows and like the obviously not the sounds that things are making, but they sound really cool, you know, and like. I think by the time I got to Jackie Chan, that had a big influence on me because I'd already seen movies that like did that. Oh. And I, I really just wanted to give a shout out to Young Dragons, the Kung Fu Kids, because if you guys haven't seen it, it's really cool. <laughs> it's it, like we wouldn't have we wouldn't have the three ninjas without that freaking movie. And that's a whole nother topic. That's another episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and Home Alone. We wouldn't have probably three ninjas, right? But it's uh, I do. It, uh, he just opened up a lot of doors for me. In the 90s, he really did for me to go explore more cinema. And I distinctly remember that. I remember just being really excited for Chow Yun Fat, Jet Li, you know, everyone who crossed over after Jackie Chan. And it's cool. Like, because listen, you and I grew up in Florida. Yeah. And I don't think you and I had many cinephiles around us. Did you have some? Did, I, I didn't. I'm sorry. I'm not going to speak for you. I didn't have any cinephiles around me. Well, I grew up in Sarasota, which has a very, very robust cinema. Film ah, okay. Sarasota Film Festival and Burns Court and, and all that, but I wasn't going to it. <laughs> like, oh, okay. I, worked at, I worked at Blockbuster and I like watching movies anyway, you know, but I, I would say, yeah, absolutely that, you know. Um, I worked in a I movie theater. I, I watched what was new. It, to me, felt like the British invasion almost. Like, here they are in the 60s, and, like, British rock music really wasn't making any waves in the U.S. And all of a sudden, it took a couple breakout groups, my one, my favorite in particular, um, to, to come over. And it was like, oh, my God, British music, this is great. You know, and then here we are, Jackie Chan comes out. We see it as, you know, teenagers. And it's like, what else? What else is there? And all of a sudden, Hong Kong cinema. And we get this whole, I mean, it, it had been out there ever. Yeah. And we had all this stuff to watch all of a sudden. And it was like, yeah, that's what I did. I just went into it, all of it. And it was like, you just saw cool upon cool. I mean, yeah, there's some duds in there, but like mostly it was really cool, you know? And it, yeah, it really broadened my horizons as far as, gosh, it, it probably had a huge influence on the rest of my life. You know, even, you know, just, I mean, us moving to Korea. Even yeah, that kind of like, hey, I know there's stuff out there that I haven't seen. And yeah, you know, Asian culture was something that I wasn't really getting a lot of living in Sarasota. And St. Uh... Pete. <laughs> and listen, oh, you, man. I was originally supposed to move to Japan. And what got me there was Lost in Translation and Tokyo Drift. And so I, I got a job in Japan four days before I left. The company went oh, under. Man. And then they then I got a job over in Korea, which worked out well because I was going to be living in Tokyo, making next to nothing with about three roommates. Instead, I ended up in Chengju, met you, Norbert, Niall, a bunch of really cool people. And then I, yeah, just actually, we made more money and we had our own apartments, really nice apartments in Korea. Taught You're going to love this. We taught 27 hours a week. But yeah, that got me over there. And it was, oh, yeah, Tokyo Drift. That's a yeah. classic. That's what, you know, I, I remember watching that movie and going, well, because I love Justin Lin. I, I knew better. sticker in Japan. Oh, when did I you? bought the movie in Japan. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. He, you know, I knew Better Luck Tomorrow and I, I knew like who Justin Lin was. And then I watched him like, man, Fast and the Furious and Justin Lin. So then that got me over to, you know, almost got me over to Japan. They're like, you can go over there. You won't have a job, but you'll have an apartment to stay in while they, you know, the rent's paid. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Now it was, that's what got me over there. And then, you know, yeah, it's cool. But I mean, yeah, then I met you guys. We watch more movies. I think it just opened up my world. And yeah, it's police story has got to be. What are your favorite action films, James? I'm mumbling here. I'm kind of. I'm. I, 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 what do you? What, what? If you could go to an island with five action films, which five would you take? All right. Well, it's not going to be an immediate answer because that's a huge question. <laughs> I always drop the biggest bombs on you. So how about this? What are your favorite? This is like what hot if, ones right now. <laughs> what have you? What have your favorite? What are your favorite action films since 2010? Oh, I have mine if you want to hear them. So I I'm going to say... Lot, I haven't watched a lot of action movies since 2010. I, I would say Boss Level. I'm going to say Raid 1 and 2. Boss Level's oh, good. Oh. Carnahan. Raid 1 and 2. Night Comes for Us. 13 Assassins. Oh, that's right. 13 Assassins. Uh, I love Triple Assassin. Threat. I love Mad Max Fury Road. I love John Wick. So I would say I would say those four, and then the fifth is tied with about eight movies. All right. Well, let me just do all time then, because I don't... Action is not my 
biggest genre of, of oh. movie. I watch a lot of horror movies, lots of comedies, lots of documentaries, and sports mostly. Um, Do you like so you like Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon? <laughs> yeah, because it's a horror mockumentary comedy. So favorite action movies, yeah, The Raid has got to be up there too. I have never seen a John Wick. Oh, wow. I know, I know that my my buddies are like, how have you not done? And they the dog died in the first one, and they really screwed with me. <laughs> yeah. And I know it's awesome, but like I will watch them. I will watch them. Just fast forward it. I'll tell you when the timestamp is for you to start watching. Actually, yeah, send me the timestamp for for after that, and then I'll continue. It took Megan um, a few years to like the John Wick franchise again. After my so wife Megan, after that, I would say probably yeah. Police Story is up there. The Raid's up there. What is the one with uh, the gun katas that nobody watched that was awesome? Gun kata. Yeah, it's got uh, Christian oh, Bale. Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Yeah, underrated movie. That movie was awesome. Uh, yeah, and you know, Boss Level, another movie that like no one watched. And like, I just told my buddy about it the other day and he finally watched it and we were like, dude, nonstop action. And I'm like, it is, it's, that's the whole movie. It's just Groundhog Day, action movie. Guy keeps dying, figures it out. That's the movie. Arnahan's oh, a beast. You know, he made, he made what, Narc, A-Team, Smoking Aces, Stretch. Like, he, he's made some good action films, Carnahan. Okay, yeah, and I, you know, now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, it's not that I'm not an action movie fan. It's I'm a very specific action movie fan. Ip Man 4. Scott, Scott Scotty movie. Adkins. Dude, awesome freaking movie. Yeah, so my dad used to watch action movies, but you know, he passed away in 2011. But like, I'd go to Blockbuster and he'd be like, I don't care, get five action movies. And like, <laughs> I would be in the action section, like just picking them out. Like, it didn't matter what they were. And he would just love it. And like, there was this, yeah, there was this one awesome movie. It was just, it was just, oh man. Oh, I'm going to have to find that out. Oh, man. It's pretty funny with my father-in-law. I just put a Scott Atkins movie on and it's just, it's all good. <laughs> just watch a Scotty A movie. And I definitely, I definitely lean towards, recently it's very much so for me about the Indonesian action films. Like I love the Raid, Raid 2, Night Comes Rose, Pre-Man, but I also dig Japanese action films like the, you know, 13 Assassins, Battle Royale, and then you got the Hong Kong cinema. So, I mean, I, I think... Battle Royale is... It's nuts. It Dude, really is. So, I mean, so is 13 Assassins, though. That is, again, amongst some of my favorite movies. Yeah, it's an all-timer for me. I've been I've been wanting to talk about it for years because I it just blows my mind. And the villain is just so hateful and horrifying. Yes. And 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 you was I I love you know what I'm going back to police story really quick. And I know you, you just looked up some movies, but I love at the end of police story when they're like you can't kill him, don't kill the bad guy. But Chan just works it. Like you know, he mm-hmm. just Jackie just destroys his I love it. And they're like, I didn't see that. So I love Well, that. this isn't, we're not on the police story two one yet, but you know how that opens. <laughs> so. I mean, I just love it, dude. I just love it that like, it, oh yeah, you're right. That's true. <laughs> but still, it's fun. He does work them yeah. over though. Yeah, he does. <laughs> the, working those guts. Because in most movies are like, you're not hit. You're better than him. Don't yeah. do this. Listen, I'm going to, I'm going to destroy his liver. I don't care. I'm going to punch him 45 times in the stomach. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's, but it's it's a good juxtaposition, right? That's what we were talking about earlier. It's like the comedy, the tonal shifts in this. And like he's comedy, 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 does this whole, and then you would think after the mall scene and stuff, yeah, cool off, buddy, cool off. All right, I'm cool. I'm cool. And no, he's not comedy, Jackie Chan there. He's like, no, I'm getting my licks in. And then he just does it. And it's just like, whoa. Yeah, that doesn't, that's not, that's not the classic, like, chivalric hero Mm-mm, he works those guts yeah. it makes me very happy and it, I, it may, well it does make you happy right because we always see the whole like i've got the white hat yeah i'm better than you and this guy's just and it's not even just like one punch like ah ha, ha i got my one punch in you know it's like <laughs> nope i'm going all the way on this one <laughs> it's like yeah okay and i didn't i didn't see anything i'm gonna walk away <laughs> I, but you know listen i'm just what so happened? glad I'm so glad we got to talk about this. There's so many other movies I want to talk. I'm going to talk about Equilibrium now. I want to talk about 13 Assassins now. There's so many movies that didn't come to the States Equilibrium because I think they made so much money on foreign uh, international Samurai. sales. We could do a whole oh, episode seven. about Kikuchio. Oh, that would be four episodes. The yes, greatest seven. actor of sam- samurai cinema, man. I would say greatest rain fight ever, too. I'm just going to put that out there. Man, it's just brutal when Gora Bay dies. I'm just like that's mud fighting as well. 
That's where Gora Bay dies. Yeah. <laughs> in the mud, man. Just, it's so it, horrible. That's how you, the characters in that. And it's so, that's a very interesting film because it's Seven Samurai, Ronin, Protective Village. Like, yeah, that's so high concept. There's a lot more to it, but I, I, that's why I love it. Like, I think you, you can condense the plot into an elevator pitch. But then it's so, but because of that, you can make it rich with characters because the plot's so simple. It makes me not simple. I'm doing air quotes simple, but right. it's, and I think police story is that to a certain degree, it's just a cop has to protect a lady so she can be a witness at a trial and things go crazy. And I love this movie. And uh, do, do you have any other final thoughts to think about this? I mean, we've, we've, we've fanned, we fanned it all over it, but fanboyed <laughs> all over it, but it's, it, sure. I don't care, man, like that, whatever. We're here to talk about movies we love. And, and this is a very influential movie and I like it a lot. And I'm going to give you a $32 and 80 cent bonus for coming on this show, James. I'll take that daily wage for protecting <laughs> the integrity of the MFF podcast <laughs> <laughs> so that I can testify to how great cinema really is. Oh, I love it. Uh, so did you want to, did you come up with any movies before we got out of here? Or, uh, do we, did uh, you... you know, I, I did want to add to my, my action movie list, bad boys too. Okay. Uh, j- just because the, the leather is very supple. Oh, those dead bodies. Here's the deal, James. Someone's coming over. They don't know many action movies. You have an entire mm-hmm. closet full of action movies, and you can pick two, like in Hot Fuzz. He picked Bad Boys 2 and Point Break. What two action films are you picking to show this person? What, what <laughs> two action movies am I picking to show this guy all about action movies? You know what? I'll, I'll have to keep it accessible. I'm going to say that, you know, maybe a Rush Hour 1 is a good one. It's fun. It's not too hard to get into. It's enjoyable. I'm going to, I'm going to give Rush Hour 1 uh, a run. And then, you know, maybe for for the second one, um, Assault on Precinct 13. Oh, classic. That's a beautiful film. I'm going to go, if they've never seen action films, I'm going to do Die Hard and The Raid. Nice. That's what I nice. think. Nice. Because they're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any of those if, if if there was a four movie set that's that's exce- all those movies are accessible those are accessible movies James but if I, I, if yeah. I was in a store <laughs> and I saw Rush Hour Assault on Precinct 13 Die Hard and The Raid in a four pack I own all four of those but I would buy it anyway <laughs> I would just be like what what is this this is perfect no that's that's like a thing you see in like a Walmart 11.99 bin and it's just like the regular DVD is not a Blu-ray and you're like why are these movies packaged together and like I don't care at that point I'm like what genius did that <laughs> this is great <laughs> give this person a raise that's exactly. what I'm going to do like if I'm universal I'm going to put together the strangest four packs in the history of the planet cuz I have the Kurt Russell four pack I have the Stallone four pack I have the Wesley right. Snipes four pack uh, I think that's Warner Brothers actually but if I'm Warner Brothers, I'm going to do four completely different genres and just slap no no same actors, no same directors, and just slap them there. And you're like, oh, well, what's this here? Batman Forever, <laughs> My Best Friend's Wedding, Ishtar, and Godzilla vs. Kong. <laughs> See, I was going with like, <laughs> like a slap shot, the cutting edge. <laughs> And like the Hudsucker proxy. <laughs> Why are they there? I don't know, but I like those movies. That's a great set. There's ice skating in two of them, but not the third one. That's exactly. It throws you totally off. Wait, I would do Barton Fink, <laughs> The Shining, and Mighty Ducks 2. Oh, man. I was going to put Billy Madison in there, but that's even better. <laughs> oh, my God. We could do this. This should be your next thing. This should be the next contest, the tournament. Like oh. ridiculous movie packs, five movies that shouldn't be together, but they should be together. That's a really good idea. Yeah, you'll come up with the rules for it, but that'd be fun. Like, who could make the best Walmart bargain bin DVD selections? You're at a store and you see it, and they're four completely different genres, no classics, and it just confuses you as to why they're together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has to confuse you as to why they're together. No theme has to be confusing. But I do it, like, it, you can have juxtaposition too. You can have Barton Fink shine. No, not shiny, but you know what I mean? You can have two hotel movies and an insane film. And you're like, wait, that that's getting an emotion from me. I don't understand why. Yeah, we'll call it like two guys, a girl on a pizza place tournament. Because like, <laughs> that's what we're doing here. It's like, there's just stuff. 
Well, come by MFF, everyone, to Movie Films of Flicks Facebook to, to join on all these polls and tournaments. They're a lot of fun. But James, thank you so much for joining me, man. This is wonderful. I love this movie, and uh, I love talking to you about movies, man. So thank you for joining me. As always, an honor to be here, Mark. Can't wait all to right. do it again. All right. So for me, Mark Hoffmeyer, for James Mula, this is Movie Films of Flicks. We'll see you next week.